What's up, everybody? So, back with part three of the, I guess now four part or five part series, uh, with part one still being missing. So, here we are, we got our um, HP system, our Elite M9160F uh, at back of the BIOS, like how we were last time, got hooked up to my monitor. And we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna load uh, Windows Vista back onto the machine. So, this is a Vista SP2 OEM disk. I'm going to boot to the disk, install the OS using the COA key on the side of the case, and then update all the drivers. So let me go ahead, open the DVD drive. I'm not saying it's a DVD player. I don't really think it matters, but sorry if this is mono audio. Like I said, it, this is gonna get a lot better. Audio quality will get a lot better once um, I get my new phone. So, all right, let me go save and exit the BIOS. And I believe it's uh, here, let's see if I can see it on the post screen here. Uh, escape for the boot menu. I think this is the latest BIOS, but I'm not 100% sure, so. I already went ahead and I uh, wrote zeros to the disk, so the disk has been zeroed out, so there's no OS, and hopefully all those viruses that are on there are gone. So if Windows Vista, um, it was what I consider the modern setup process for Windows. Uh, Windows XP, if you remember, or if anyone has ever installed it, had like a nice, not nice, but it had like a very basic blue background. I think it was the same as Windows 2000. Uh, maybe before that, but that's kind of where my knowledge ends. So, but um, this is like the modern setup where it has the same G it has the same GUI basically since now till Windows 10. I haven't tried the Windows 11 betas. Maybe I'll make a video about that. Uh, but this is where really where you see the modern Windows installation. So I'll go ahead and we'll go through this to the COA part. I'll put in the COA and then we'll. Uh, uh, go, come back when I have the machine booted up. So we'll go through the initial setup of Windows Vista. Again, I want to apologize in advance if the audio is bad. Uh, like I said, my, my phone's really on the way out. This is an old Galaxy S8 that I'm using to record this, and it's taken a it's taken a beating since I got it back in 2017. So in August I should have I'll, I'll be out most of August, so I won't be making any videos really during that time. So I'm gonna maybe try to finish this up by the end of July. And then we'll, we'll see where, uh, where it takes us. So, so if um, this looks familiar, this is kind of like the same almost uh, setup screen that it was for, um, well, hopefully my mouse works, yep. This is the same setup screen that you kind of see in um, almost all modern versions of Windows. So we're gonna go ahead and install now. Oh, okay, I have to put this in, I'll put this in later. So, next, yeah. Oh, wait, no, yes, I mean, I wanna do no. Okay, we have Home Premium on this machine. I have selected the, the uh, edition I have purchased. Let's go ahead and I hit accept next. And we're gonna go to custom. There we go. So the, yeah, this is a little partition the scrub made. And we're gonna go ahead and drive options, delete. And we're gonna go ahead. I still don't know why this is a 360 gig hard drive, but it says 720 gig hard drive. Maybe there was two of them in here originally and then one was, one was uh, taken out. Okay, so that's really it. So I was just going to go ahead and it's going to install. So this is probably going to take maybe about half an hour, uh, maybe a little less. And then we'll be back at the setup screen. All right, so that installation took about 15, 20 minutes. So as you can see, this is uh, the username and account creation. So oh, let's just do Cliff. No password. I don't know. Chess piece. Maybe the dog. Nah, chess piece. Uh, I usually, from my naming convention, is always the model type. So it's just a M9160F. Sometimes, or I'll do HP. Oops. Can I insert on right now? Nope, I don't. Okay. Now we'll keep the default background, but I usually take uh, I usually take this one. <laughs> this is bring me back to when I had my Optiplex. Uh, my second gaming computer was an Optiplex GX620. With a Pentium D, and I remember doing this setup on it. Time's a little off. Okay, so there we go. Uh, that that's really it to get it. Windows uh, Vista installed. It's it was a lot simpler. I mean, XP wasn't too bad either, but it was a lot simpler in Vista than XP. Uh, this is also um, uh, Vista SP2, so there's a lot of bugs that have been fixed. Uh, the one, the original release of Windows Vista was uh, was was buggy. That's warranted, but the um, I'll talk about this in a little bit as well, but the main issue of Windows Vista was um, kind of, it's mirroring what Microsoft is doing with Windows 11 right now, is that they're segmenting off a ton of older hardware, 
And so in 06, I believe, when Vista, was it 06 or was it 08 when Vista launched? I think it was, it was one of those years. I think it was 06 or 08, one of those years. But um, uh, they made it so the new Aero effects needed a DirectX a uh, 9 capable GPU. And a lot of people were still running on like early 2000s Windows XP machines, which had, you know, DX8, DX7 uh, GPUs that were not compatible, um, older IDE drives. Um, they really tuned Windows Vista to modern, uh, at the time, hardware. So we're thinking, you know, dual core processors, SATA hard drives, DirectX 9 GPUs. So you could run like, um, so my, my original, my first ever computer was an Optiplex GX260. So the opposite of the, like, a, uh, was that a Poundrome or an, a, a, something of a 620? Uh, but, um, it had a Pentium 4 Northwood at 2.66 gigahertz and if i were st if i had upgraded the gpu to it <laughs> upgraded to a geforce uh uh 6200 6200 yeah i think that's what it was uh in, in the pci slot because dumb me dumb kid me thought oh hey if i buy a pci gpu i could use it in a new build because that was around the time when um AGP was going away but i should have just probably bought a 6600 ag uh 6600 gt agp but that's besides the point. So, um, uh, but if I was still using the Intel Extreme 2 graphics that are built into the computer, forget about it. I wouldn't have had, have had no video acceleration. It looked like this. Okay, so that's enough babbling for right now. But um, as you can see, this is the welcome center that starts in the beginning of Windows Vista. Oh, gadgets. Remember these? I remember these. So I used to have a whole bunch of these CPU, GPU, network measurements. Okay, so... So we got our 4 gigs of RAM, our Core 2 Quad, it doesn't know what the video card is. Interesting, I thought it would have some sort of built-in drivers on this disk. Let's go to Computer. Let's go to System Properties. See, this looks a lot like Windows 7. So you've got the general GUI for, for Windows 7 baked into Windows Vista here. Let's just go to Device Manager. Oh, UAC, I got to save UAC, it was terrible. And um, hmm, this has a Code 10. Uh, I guess it's the driver that was built in. This has a Code 10 as well, so. Okay, that explains why I have no Ethernet right now, so I can't really go and update any drivers. So what I'm going to go ahead and do, I'm going to update all the drivers, and I will be back. Alrighty, so after a few hours and a bit of struggling, I finally got in all the drivers installed. I had to leave UAC on. There's been some issues with this installation. I'll go over them just a little bit, but as you can see, we have our 8400GS installed. We have our two... DVD drives, uh, control storage driver install, our US, our USB wireless, and our Ethernet adapter. Obviously, the Core 2 Quad. Uh, the TV tuner card, couldn't find the driver for it. The VIX Pure View uh, U48B0. I don't know if this is the driver that HP used, but this is the driver that I found. HP took their drivers down for this machine, so I'm just, I had to recreate them. And then that's it, so all the drivers are working. You can see we have the arrow glass effects up and running. Uh, let's fire up CPU-Z. So the issue I'm having right now, I think there's an issue with Net Framework on this installation. I can't run Windows Update. I can't um, run certain programs that are Vista compatible that should run. So I don't know exactly what's going on, but I believe that's a Net Framework issue when I installed the NVIDIA driver. So in CPU-Z, we have our Core 2 Quad Q9400 at 2.66 gigahertz. Uh, as you can see, we have SSSE 4.1, I mean SSSE 3 and SSE 4.1. So this will technically run Windows 11 if Microsoft drops the TPM requirements. This is a 95 watt, uh, 45 nanometer CPU. This is the, the 95 watt, I believe, is the limit for this HP motherboard. And the motherboard was, uh, I, that's weird, it says it's Pegatron, but oh, it's because I flashed maybe just the BIOS I found, but this is an Asus board, so it should be uh, actually, you know, made by Asus. Um, but BIOS's date is September 10th of 2009, so 12 years old now. Memories are 4 gigs of DDR2, clocked at 400 megahertz, but since it's uh, DDR, it's 800 megahertz. Yep, PC2 6400. Let's take a look at our temps right now. So our CPU's idling in the mid-30s, that's not bad. Uh, 
drive is at 40 degrees and our GPU is at 45 degrees. And that's obviously, the, oh, that one has a fan on it, a little tiny fan. So uh, it's a little hot in my apartment right now. So it's not bad for, you know, idle temperatures. Take a look at the GPU. Okay, so we have an NVIDIA 8400GS. This GPU is a GT218. So I'm guessing this was a later revision. Uh, it's because the, if I remember, G80 was the 8800 GTX. So uh, but, so I believe this might be a, a later revision. Oh, it has a gig of memory. I thought it was only 512, which is interesting. So I wasn't even paying attention to what color button here. This is the latest driver from for uh, Vista 64-bit. It's NVIDIA version 342.01. And we have DirectX 10.1 support. So. I went and I ran the uh, the Windows Vis <laughs> the Windows uh, Experience Index tool, and we scored I think five point nine is the highest on Vista, and I believe it's six or seven point nine on Windows Seven. But uh, the processor and the RAM are both five point nine, and the hard disk is five point eight, and graphics are four point four and five point one. Even though these scores are basically meaningless, uh, eventually. The OEMs made Microsoft drop this because they didn't want their users to get like bad scores on their on their low end components. So that's why there's no more built in benchmarking tool for Windows. And let's see, uh, general use of the system is all right except for the net framework issue. Uh, most of the web browsers, this is Firefox version 52 ESR. Uh, this is the last web browser, uh, the last version of Firefox you could run on Vista. And this ESR branch was dated to, I believe, mid-2018. So that's the, that's the last browser here. So it's about three years out of date now, but it, it's better than XP. But, I mean, I, wait a minute, never mind. I scratched that. I believe it's the same one you can run in XP as well. So, so um, it's probably a little bit better, but just about the same. So now let's see. Let's just try going to, um, let's try watching a video. I would try more, but the problem is, is that... Uh, that net framework issue I need to fix because like I, I was gonna run pass mark and stuff and uh, I, I just can't so and she's obviously a little slow it's only got four gigs of RAM so especially something like um, YouTube and the 8400 GS and the old browser is really gonna stretch it out it lifts customs Oops. Oop. What, what, what is going on with my keyboard did I hit insert yeah Why is this cheap custom? I mean, this cheap not this cheap keyboard mouse combo for this. So. Okay, yeah, here, watch, watch this. Let's see how this will run. Uh, this is probably at 360p. I'm gonna guess. Oh, it's at 720p right now. It's not bad. What happens if I put it at 4k? Probably gonna struggle with this. So. Yeah, it's dropping some frames right now. What would it be like at 1080p? And it's still dropping some frames, but it's it's definitely usable. But obviously, if we just put it back to not even if we even put it on 480p, this is fine. So. Um, so you could still watch YouTube videos on this. Obviously, it's a Core, it's a core 2 Quad PC. But I don't know what am I talking about? So uh, I really got to compete with everybody here, though. So all right, um, I'm a little tired today, so I think I'm going to cut it here. Uh, I got to fix the things I want to do. I want to fix the net framework issue. Uh, I want to see if I can run some benchmarks and some games. And so that'll be the next part of this video, probably next weekend. Uh, see if I have some CD based games that I could play and then maybe part what would have been part five uh, we will maybe update this uh, upgrade the system just to put in a better GPU I have a GT 640 which will is passive I mean when I say passively powered I mean it's powered by the PCI Express slot so I don't have to worry about a peg connector uh, and it's a lot better than the 8400 GS that's in here and uh, CPU is pretty maxed out. I don't know. I don't think the Q9650 will work in here. Uh, and I could put 8 gigs of RAM in it. So uh, that could probably be a potential part 5. But until then, I will see you next time.